Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to another video. Today's video, as you have seen by the title, is going to be my review on the iPhone 8 in 2022. And here I have my iPhone 8 with me and we are going to do a re the review on it. Well, I know that not a lot of people buy iPhone 8s today, but I thought I'd just do a review on it. Since the budget iPhones are still using this same exact form factor of the Touch ID home button, this rectangular display. I thought I should do this video and just go through everything once again. I hope that after this updated review, those who are wondering whether to get the SE second gen or get the SE third gen or you should just go for the iPhone 8. I know definitely a lot of people are wondering whether they should go for a 3 year old flagship or go for the newest base model. So I thought I'll just make a video of doing a review on it and going through the technical specifications so that it might help you make a decision on whether you should get the iPhone 8 or should go for the SE third generation or the SE second generation. So without further ado, let's get started into the video. So here's the iPhone 8. This phone was released back in 2017 with iOS 11. So when this phone released, it came with the original software which is iOS 11. And it's now supported till iOS 16. I have not downloaded the iOS 16 beta here. When the public release of iOS 16 comes out, I'll definitely download it as this is not my beta testing phone. This model that I'm having is the 64 GB silver color variant and this phone has a a11 bionic chip now let's take a look at the now let's take a look at the ports here's the power button and here we have the volume rocker up and down and the mute and the unmute switch with obviously a home button which has touch id on it and here we have the charging port and the speakers i have been using this phone as my main phone for the past two years before i posted my I'm changing my phone video. So before that, I was using this phone for the past two years for social media and all my beta testing. iOS 14 and 15 beta testing, I did it on this phone. And of course, I've been using this for light gaming such as Subway Surfers Temple Run and of course, my Apple Arcade videos. My favorite game on Apple Arcade iPhone videos were using this phone. I have been using this phone caseless without any case and just with this screen protector for the past two years. And as you can see here, there is very minimal wear and tear. So there's a deep cut in the aluminium frame here and there's also a small dent here at the bottom i hope you can see it other than this there isn't any scratches and the back is flawless except for fingerprints which of course can't be avoided at all the screen is a 4.7 inch lcd multi-touch display with 326 pixels per inch and this definitely has true tone and of course 3d touch the hardware for 3d touch is inside this phone but obviously it's disabled with the software update so we sadly can't use it anymore but just to let you all know that the hardware for 3d touch is available on this phone here's a 4k hdr video i think it's very obvious that this video is not playing hdr this is playing in 1080p and that is because this display is not able to play hdr videos and the heat on the back and on the screen it's very minimal close to no heat because this is playing on 1080p and not 4k hdr the brightness of this phone is 625 nits and of course increasing the brightness the video is totally blur i'm sorry about that but this has a 625 nits of max brightness and as for blooming issue i don't see any blooming in this screen these screens are perfectly fine so this screen is really good and even though this is a small screen the content playing on this screen is really good as this screen is not very small at the same time it isn't big and this screen is really nice for holding in one hand and watching videos this screen is perfectly good for single users but this definitely won't be good if you're watching movies or shows on the phone with a bigger group of people. For that, you really need a bigger screen. But for a single user, this is perfectly fine. This phone is the last flagship phone to come with Touch ID. And after this phone, only the budget phones had Touch ID and the flagship phone all moved to Face ID. So unlocking is pretty fast. As you can see here, this is it's pretty instant and fast so i don't really have any any issues with touch id but of course your finger isn't recognized when it's sweaty or when there's moisture on your fingers during that time the touch id is not recognized but other than that touch id is really fast and very efficient let me show it again and let me press the home button and that's it we are instantly in the phone no issues or complaints in that the front facing camera is a 7 megapixel front facing camera with 1080p video recording now let's take a look at a sample of a photo and a video taken on the front facing camera of this iphone 8 this is a photo taken from the front facing camera of the iphone 8 take a look at it and tell me how it is this is a video taken on the front facing camera of the iphone 8 with some ambient noise take a look at the video and tell me how it looks and how it sounds and now onto the rear camera. The rear is a single 12 megapixel camera which can record 4K, 24, 30 and 60 FPS. So it varies from 24 to 60 FPS in 4K. Now let's take a look at a sample photo and video from this phone. Here's a photo taken from the rear camera 
of the iPhone 8. This is a video recorded from the rear camera with some ambient noise. Take a look at it and tell me how it looks and how it sounds. Now that we are done with the cameras, let's move on to the speaker. Let's play some NCS at full volume and see how the speakers are. The speakers of this phone were mediocre. It definitely did sound loud in this room because this room doesn't have any ambient noise or anything. So that is why it sounded so loud. When in a normal environment, this phone isn't that loud. And obviously that's because of the surrounding noise and the ambient noise. This speaker is really good. It's a really capable speaker. But if you're someone who's looking for a good bass and just really a good speaker overall, this phone isn't the one for you. Because the music and the sound coming from this speaker are a little more flat than the other newer phones. And now it's time to take a look at the battery. So as you can see here, the battery of this phone is at 83%. I've been shooting for about half an hour and the phone from 90% it dropped to 83%. So that isn't very bad. But let me show you the battery health of this phone. The battery health of this iPhone 8 is at 91% and of course I've changed the battery of this iPhone once. When it dropped around 85, I changed once and now it's at 91% for about more than a year actually. Of course for the past two years when I've been using this my main phone, I had to charge it twice a day because the battery wouldn't last me. So when I was using this phone for the past two years, I always had to carry it on a power bank with me just to make sure that the battery of this phone lasted me for one whole day. So at the middle of the day, it will drop till the low power warning and I'll have to charge it again to 100% to continue using. So I always have to charge this phone twice a day. Now let's test the graphics on this phone. And for that, we are first going to run a benchmark. And the benchmark that we're going to run is the usual 3D Mark Wildlife benchmark. And we're going to click Start. And the graphics test is loading. Okay, the benchmark just started. It took a few seconds to start. So it just started. And we're looking at around 15 to 16 FPS. Oh, now there's a there's an increase to 24, 23. So around 15 to 25 FPS. The results are out. And the average frame per second is 17.1 FPS and the battery percentage dropped by 1 percentage. Average frame rate is 11 to 26. So isn't much difference. So the benchmark is giving us pretty average results on the, on the FPS. But like I always say, benchmarks don't mean everything. So we are going to go for some real world testings by playing some games. For those who are following this channel for a while, you all would know that the first game that we try out in our gaming review is Temple Run. Tradition that we have been doing ever since I started. So this is just to make sure that older games run well too. Because Temple Run has always been staggering and there hasn't been really optimized for newer phones. This game definitely runs perfectly fine on my iPhone 4S. The newer phones, they don't really run well. So we're just going to play this for a while and see. For now, it's running smoothly with no hiccups or glitches. So let's play for a while and see. Okay, so I'm actually a few minutes into the game and there hasn't been any glitches or any stuttering. As you can see, the character has started running faster. So that means there are more frame rates. This has been really going well. And oops, I died. Temple Run ran really well. This is straight away after doing the 3 Mark Wildlife benchmark. So I'm playing games right away after the benchmark and the phone is really holding up well. So that is a really surprise, especially Temple Run holding up really well is definitely a surprise. But we are not going to stop here. We are going to move on to something more intensive. We are going to play Call of Duty and see how that runs on this phone. We are playing back-to-back -back games. We are really stressing a lot on the processor. Of course, I've had lags and frame rates dropping even on my S21 and my S22. So let's see how this phone holds up when playing Call of Duty. This small screen is definitely a big disadvantage for me here as I'm actually missing my controls and I can't really see the enemies coming in. I would definitely love a bigger screen. That is the first disadvantage on this. I can feel the phone starting to boil in my hands and I'm starting to press the wrong buttons because this is too small and I'm not going to blame it entirely on the phone because I've not been playing this game for a while so just losing a bit of my skills here and there. I really can't press it. Okay, I'm dead. The smaller screen is really a disturbance. I really have to go and reposition my controls in order for me to play on this phone which isn't really a pleasant thing to do as this is the cloud account and I can connect it to various phones to play. And when I play on bigger phones, these controls are perfect. So that's really a bummer. This is a really small screen. And I think for me to play normally, I will have to glue this phone to my face, which isn't really good in terms of health. So isn't really good for the eyesight. But 
that is the only way for me to play these type of games or maybe I think I should just get used to it maybe I'm just using bigger phones and not getting used to it that might also be another reason so this phone definitely isn't suitable for games like Call of Duty that's because of the small screen form factor and this phone is really boiling up due to me doing back to back games and intense graphics the processor is really throttling up and feel it in my hands after finishing with all the tests and the phone not being on low power mode we can see that the battery is down to 75 so from 90 we have dropped these phones battery percentage to 75 and that's a lot of battery drop considering that i didn't finish one whole match in call of duty and also that i have been shooting for only for about less than half an hour this battery isn't good at all and there we are we are done with all the testings now on to the question, should you get this phone in 2022? My answer to that is, of course you can get this phone. This phone is supported till the latest iOS, which is iOS 16. And of course a very capable phone. And even though the design is outdated, the hardware of the phone isn't. It's still fast and it still does many of the tasks that we threw at it without any hiccups or with just little hiccups. So those are not really a big issue. But if you are someone who plays intense gaming or if you are someone who uses your phone for intense photography or if you are someone who really needs the processing power then of course I don't recommend going for the iPhone 8 because number one, it only has a single camera and the screen real estate of this phone is very small. So you can't really do much with that and also the processing power isn't that big and the battery life is really small. And talking about battery life, if you are someone who is going for battery life or if you are someone who doesn't like carrying on a portable to keep your phone charged up then this phone is definitely not for you. If you're having this phone as a daily driver, even if you're having 100% battery health, you always should carry a power bank for this phone because this doesn't last more than half a day. And of course, this phone lacks a few new features such as precision tracking for air tags, which for some of you is very important. So this phone is definitely not. There are many reasons why you shouldn't get this phone. But if you're someone who just wants to come into iPhone or if you're someone who just wants a spare phone to change till you upgrade to a new phone, then the iPhone 8 is just for you and of course there isn't anything wrong with using this phone in 2022 and like i've always been saying very capable phone if you find it for a good deal if you're someone who's thinking of using this as a spare phone then really just go for it there's nothing to think about because for now according to me this is the best iphone which you can use as a spare phone with that we've come to the end of the iphone 8 review if you like what you saw do remember to click the like button do remember to subscribe to this channel and with that thank you so much for watching and i'll catch all of you the next one. Bye-bye.